I saw you. Uh, you. You've done a lot since then. You have a book. We already have two number one records, and um, the album come out June 23rd. And you know, people oh, you know, come saying on. like, "No, I'm serious. <laughs> no, he really is." Like, he, you know, I have him in the studio. But also the energy, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, from... Where is he? You well, didn't bring him. Because I was really excited to meet him. I know. He, He's seven months now? Seven months. He's so... And are you worried you're going to give him a big head because he's getting a lot of attention already? I feel like what I'm doing is, is just in, of course, the family environment, but always brought me in the family business, meaning as in when he brought me in the family business. Did they give you those kind of positive affirmations? Absolutely. Well, you know, I remember everything because... Look at me. I'm, I think I'm a perfect example of a, a well-raised son. You know what I'm saying? And worry uh, that that too much is too much. That he, you're giving him so much from the get-go and putting him on the throne and sticking him on Instagram, and that maybe it could be a little overkill. Well, no, nah, I don't think so at all because I'm putting out love. You smile. You love it. I make somebody's day as well as my day, as well as his day. So when you put love out there, that's the most powerful thing in the world. Matter of fact, I encourage everybody to go on the Instagram and they're putting all that garbage out there. That's what I do. How has being a father changed you? It changed me completely. Um, Flowers. You. And, and But <laughs> then when I see my son. It, Hate if love is the answer. Well, that's the thing. You know what I'm saying? You know, Last time I came here, I was explaining to you what they were. Stay away from they. They don't want happy. So what we're going to do is win more, smile and be happy. And I'm going to be on the show this year and next year. And hopefully the year after and after. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, if you fall for the trap, for tell everybody the world is cold. Bundle up, even in the summertime. You know what I'm saying? But I can't fall for that energy. I can't let that dictate my life and my family's life. I'm going to be good. But how do you translate... <clears throat> uh that I, I, I to helping other people. Well, it's not, it's not, it's not I, 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 it's a representing, when I speak I, I represent my scene. Whatever you love, your craft to do and your talent, get creative with it and, and take yourself to another level. I'm living proof. You're very active on social media, which is great in a way. On the other hand, this attachment to our devices can really distract people from what matters, which is quality time, mm -hmm. unfettered by technology right. and just one on one. Yes. So how do you do that? Do you put your phone in a drawer at times I mean, and that's, say, that's, that's, I am not going to deal it, with this right now well, because I'm going to remember this instead of that? Yes, you're, you're absolutely 100 percent correct. And that's what about your album. Yes, because it's pretty amazing. You've got huge, huge. artists. This one is who want me to name them. Please. Beyond, they want to all work with you. Well, you know, we're blessed to be winners. You know what I'm saying? Winners, no, but come on. What do you bring to the table? Great music. You know what I'm saying? I put out great music. I'm one of the best producers. I look up to people like Quincy Jones. You know what I'm saying? I do things that people can't do. I get, I get a high off of somebody saying, you cannot pull this off. If I'm with you and I'm doing an interview with you, I'm going to make Katie Kirk give me a bigger interviews than she ever did in her entire career. Like this one is going to be legendary online because this is big. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to always bring the greatness out of everybody in the studio as well as come with great ideas. Kind of the conductor who brings it all Orchestrator, together. Orchestrator, conductor. I'm everything. I'm the producer. I'm the guy that's going to put it all together and put it out. I make music. You know what I'm saying like I'm a one-stop shop. Are new artists coming up yes, Tyler, that you're going to want to <clears throat> work with that you just don't even know about yet? Yeah, I love working with new talent. Let's talk about Get School. That's what we talked about last time mm -hmm. you were here, which motivates kids to stay in school. <clears throat> Sometimes you have to inspire, you know, ourselves in the world. You know, I know we're always told you have to go to school. You have to do this. You have to do that. How about we tell them why we want you to go to school so you could be happy and progress and, you know what I'm saying, and win. Motivate them from within kind of yes. light a fire inside of them rather than externally. Right, and also give them the keys of life. You know what I'm saying? Which are? They don't want you to go to Man, that's the best motivation in the world. Who are those people? Run fast when you see them. Who are they? They are people that just, just, just they, they're negative. Um, you know, some people. It's so fun to talk to you. It makes me feel happy. Thank you. Just to be next to you. Thank and you we're so excited for you for your new album. Thank you so much. Grateful that comes out June. Yes. He's got quite a future, this kid. Oh, man, he's incredible, man. I love that boy.
New York Times bestseller list for six years. About them and they're incredible. And uh, Rebecca has incredible talent. Of ex How did you learn about Henrietta Lacks? There are these amazing cells. They've been alive at just so many things. So unique. Yeah. And so valuable when it came to these maybe a week, but they would die pretty quickly. And at that point, so Henrietta happened to come along when scientists were taking samples from anybody there. Her cancer was caused by HPV, the virus that causes cervical cancer. And it just happens that where the HPV virus landed, so it did just turbocharge her cancer. Want to be a part of this film. It is such an interesting story. It's so unusual to have I me mean, completely unknown. It's, it's very, I think, uh, gratifying to see these stories finally come to light where African Americans were used against their will for scientific research, right? Not at all. And there's a lot of fear connected to going to the doctor. So when the... Such a creature of the news. Is it bizarre for you to have so much written about what happened and speculation and dissection? I, it, it was surreal. So. What did you learn, too, about the media, though? I mean, as they read, a lot of this is spin. A lot of this is just has no relationship to the truth. Or did you feel like, you know, people were kind of getting the story right? This may seem my sister and some of my best friends were, you know, I, I said they were but, uh, a couple of things. More, they, they ended up sending me some things that they actually thought were, and I, I found her piece, I remember, very interesting. I did read that. Um, I, An indication, I'm just curious, I mean, if... Don't they have well, to sort of tell you specifically or not? They, yeah. A little bit about your management skills. Management style. Management I think style. Is what was said. And, and I know <laughs> that a number of adjectives, as you know, from even hearing from your testers mm -hmm. and, and, and whatever. And when you heard that, what did you think? Did you think? That's not really me, or that's accurate, or what? Back. But how related was this to gender? You talked to us. Are these qualities that are better tolerated in men than they are women? Well, I think all of the adjectives that you just read off both spent a goodly portion of our lives covering who believe that there is something of a double standard. Do you think a double standard were qualities that were perhaps not working in your favor that would have the same uh, result would have happened to a male who I think people are interested because in many ways you're emblematic. Who are of, the people who are interested well, though? Think, are there you know, journalists? Well, we got, we got a lot of interest from social media. I think women are interested, mm -hmm. young women, because here you are in a very right. important position. No, you're the first true. female executive editor. Actually, uh... I felt that responsibility. I was very, you know, am very proud with the uh, rejection or even losing their job. And it was important to me to show that you can still hold management style. You know, I, I'm sure that there are some things and I'm, you know, I don't want to come across as some tough trying to balance the role of you know, being the demanding editor, pushing executives hard, and yet maintaining the support of the newsroom and the rank and right. file. I, I mean, that must be a, a it tricky is, thing. But I think, you know, what was always on my mind. I know that when we asked for questions on social media, one person asked uh, about working with an executive coach, which is fascinating to me because I've, I've, I don't, I've never met an executive uh -huh. coach. And I know you anything. I did learn some things, and, you know, I didn't really have time to employ some of the techniques. How did you feel Arthur Salzberger? Um, the they are, you know, the most important. Because I know there's some speculation that you all had bad chemistry or you didn't get along or there you were issues. You will have to invite him and have him talk to you about that. But from your perspective, that. was that you have talked about the importance of a family-run newspaper in this day and age. 
Um, and yet there are so few of those left. I know. Why do you think that's so critically important given the current la current landscape? I think it's important because it's a times did not have the kinds of cuts that other newsrooms did. And um, keeping, and I think, it, that is tied to the fact that so many other news organizations are controlled. And, I mean, I have a lot of respect for him. He had been, I, in fact, rec helped, you know, played a pretty big role in recruit everything that has happened I know has been analyzed and dissected and they call you know the, the people who are watching all this kind of unfold Krem Kremlinologists uh -huh. you know managing editor Dean Bacay who is yeah, now the executive I'm not gonna, editor like now we're like really in the grassy knoll Katie and I'm not gonna jump in there with you I don't want to like go into that you don't want to rehash any of that do you think you might at some point write a mm. book about what happened I, I doubt it no. I really, I don't, I think there are maybe 20 people in the universe who would be interested in that. I think a lot of people sort of are intrigued by the sort of the machinations and be behind the scenes maneuvering of all of this. But you're not going to so. go there. Mm -mm. Do you wish that you had handled any of that differently? I mean, in hindsight, that. You know, because it seems I'm to me in like reading I'm this, like beyond, like I have seems that as if the New York Times, from everything I've read, is is very personality driven and 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 they become a particularly bloody episode of games of uh, games of uh, Game of Thrones. Is is there something about the New York Times that seems to foster that kind of environment, Jill? I, I do you find that amusing? I mean, this came from someone at the New York Times, so. Um. You know, I, I don't. I know you worked with Dean Bacay. Do you feel that the, the there's been some reports about your compensation, Jill, and whether this played into how things are. I can't but really find out for sure because the New York Times won't release um, a lot of the right. germane well, information. I'm, I'm not going to talk about my pay. But on what about your what show. If, let, can we can we talk about just sort of in general terms though about people may say well Jill Abramson spoke up she came forward she hired a lawyer and look what happened to her. I know they may but I still think that that is what you know, in in a uh, Peace and Vanity Fair, Arthur Salzberger said he wanted the whole thing between you all to be very amicable, but you wanted to make it clear in no uncertain terms. Have any reservation about that? Um, did you to love and said you were honored to serve? Everyone was going to know that that's what happened, so no. <laughs> so you've had, felt no compunction no about compunction. Insist, insisting that people be clear about what happened. It's not. I to bring the times into sort of the modern marketplace. Well, my my vision was that. It Does it worry you, sort of the online uh, landscape, in terms of being at odds with deep, rich, and the fold? It did, and you know, I I read it on my phone. I kept you know swiping and swiping and swiping, but I couldn't put it down. And I I think people will read long, challenging things if they're beautifully presented and intelligently edited that uh, that there is. There's a report, as we mentioned, on innovation at the Times, which uh, said the paper was lagging in, in that area. And in fact, someone tweeted to us, I was amazed to read from the Indie study that, quote, many in the newsroom still do not get the web. Um, yes. And, and, and do you feel like you are evolving and you started in this business um, as I did. You know, New York Times has talked a lot about the money it's making charging people for online content, but all that digital revenue isn't making up for what's been lost in traditional subscriptions. And, you know, there seems to be a trend in some media organizations where sort of the, do you ever feel threatened and push back on some of those kind of, uh, if, if somebody was pushing you in that direction? concern you at sort of organizations media organizations in general it I mean it 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 does sure but uh... let's talk about that very uh, funny 
cover photo of you in the, in the New York Post, which must have been okay. very and amusing. I mean, the the story there is that like, it went viral, and I think I remember she called me at some point later that morning and said, "So <laughs> you know, and the next thing I guess." Um, your, your daughter. But my favorite thing in the world happened when I got home yesterday. I daughter is a surgeon, and and uh, what lessons do you hope she'll learn from watching you and having this happen to you? I could learn lessons from her. I mean, yeah, you know, when you sister who I'm very close to the Harvard age, it's like perfect symmetry. <laughs> yeah. You're not going to remove no. it. No. And uh, having said that, what are you proudest of? Uh, it, in terms of all that you were able to accomplish mm -hmm. while you were at the Times, not only Porter yes, or as a reporter. I think what I'm proud of from the period that... Not just about giving other women opportunities while you were there, because certainly the Times has not always been hospitable, shall we say, to... I, was, I did, yes, I tried, I, I, I tried to give uh, women great opportunities and, you know, obviously talented men too, but, you know, it... What about mistakes? What, what would yeah, WMDs... Yeah, and, you know, there, there were other stories that wasn't just her that were too credulous and relied on sources who... Lessons did you learn, Jill, that sort of you incorporated in the way you ran the paper after that? Because I think it that did did you change anything that you did or did I, I mean, think did, that that was such a wake up call to many journalists about the 9/11 in a weird way fragile yeah and people are Kevin Lockett and a lot of people asked on social media what is the future that print journalist journalism will continue to thrive even though we'll still want it's to a, hold on to the actual newspaper I do. and get that newsprint on their fingers. I, well, actually, the, new, the newsprint now is like of a quality that often doesn't rub off uh, too much on your fingers. But, yeah, it's published, by the way, uh, in response to your termination and, and found <laughs> that just a third of all newspaper staffers and a third of all supervisors in newsrooms are women. And that hasn't changed since 1998. Yeah, so I guess when Helena gets into a position of authority where she's the boss. Right. Um, I guess, you know, what I would tell her and anyone is. And finally, uh, Jonathan Eves <laughs> asks, where do you go from here? And in addition to teaching. I'm um, going to write and report. I'm going. Uh, and and so where would you publish it? I'm not saying. Are you so are wait you, and watch? Are you working? Are you a reporter too? Uh -huh. Right. I have Stay to ask tuned. these questions. <laughs> well, thank you very much Thanks, for, for all your time. We really appreciate it. I just it, Jill. wanted to end it. And but I remember when you covered the Pentagon, and you were a hell of a reporter. And I think that's off. That's a very nice compliment, Jill. Thank you very much for that. And thanks to all of. You.